fellow Africans, every time we are challenged on matters of importance, there is always a path for redemption. The only thing that Kenya needs at the moment is redemption. It's a redemption strategy that can create a coexistence of all the people. Viewers, those listening to this step or this video, I want to bring to your attention that the politics of proxy wars in Africa is becoming real and it has become a reality. I want to bring to this the attention of the African states that time and time again we have fallen victims of proxy wars. We fight wars that are not ours. We fall in conflicts that are not supposed to be don't, don't help Africa and they don't help our countries at all. The proxy war that is in East and Central and the Horn of Africa has been ignited, supported, equipped by France. It has been very real that the French government quietly through its company called Total Oil has been searching for resources around the triangle of East and Central Africa and the Great Lakes region and the Horn of Africa. The Lapset was one of them which could have been a landmark project for the people of France. They withdrew from it. The Tanga to Mwanza, they made it. They withdrew from it. The search for oil and resources through Total Oil has brought us the dangers of a proxy war in the region. It is therefore very prudent for people of the region to understand the dynamics that we are going through. For example, in Rwanda and the Burundi conflict, there is a proxy war. We are fighting a proxy country it has brought us to a war between the two countries, between Uganda and Rwanda, and Rwanda and Burundi. There is a proxy war in Congo who is sponsoring a, res a resurgence of of rebels that are fighting President Chisekedi because he was not supported by countries that we know very well. This type of strategy has happened in North Africa where Libya has been reduced to rebels where each faction, even the democratic, the government supported by United Nations is being bombarded by a rebel called Halifa Haftar who is funded by countries that we know. The question of Somalia and the Kenyan maritime presents a challenge, a test case for Africa and East Africa to stand firm and denounce the actions of countries that bring proxy wars and the proxy politics in our region. It is therefore my humble submission that for this conflict, for this to end, we must do enough publicity, advocacy around the area to tell and explain to the international community why this problem is going to create an, an imbalance in the peace in the region and the regional peace will be affected. It is therefore my humble submission that as a Ugandan whose troops brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers of other many millions Ugandans who are in Somalia condemn any action by the Somali government to try to resolve issues that should have been resolved amicably as Africans within the African confines. I submit therefore that some of us will go a mile further to do now from now onwards to expose, to show the challenges of these countries that make us fight a proxy war in Africa. Thank you very much for listening. God bless you.
Good evening, viewers. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Welcome to Punchline Africa Television, broadcasting all the way from the Republic of Kenya down from the political command center of Punchline Africa in the world. This show is Masanga Africa Perspective. It is a show that brings to you effects, things that happen on the African continent. We look at this perspective. Any war that takes place across the globe affects Africa. What ails Africa? What kills Africa? Viewers from Cairo, Johannesburg, Cape Town, Accra, Asmara, Mogadishu, Jamena, Khartoum, Nairobi, Kampala, Chigali, Bujumbura, viewers, our continent stands at a crossroads. The crossroad is not brought by us. Some of it is by us. Some is not by us. Tonight, this lecture is an open lecture. I will first give my submission to the world, to millions, especially to East African Students Association in the London School of Economics who wanted this lecture because I am a part and a parcel of the patronage of London School of Economics students, East African students and African students, London School of Economics. American foreign policy has shaped the Big Brother syndrome across the globe. It is therefore very important for the people watching, listening, students watching, millions who will take each step to understand why we have chosen the topic. Is it tactical to withdraw? What happened to the American hegemony? What will happen in Afghanistan? After if Afghanistan, where will the Americans stage another war? I understand President Joe Biden is going to address his country and the world at large sometime today. But I want to put questions to Africa. I want to put questions across to the world. Why do you invade a country? Then we withdraw from the country hurriedly, hastily, run out with your pants in catch 22, leave civilians of that country to die under the mercy of the Taliban. What was the main intention of invading the Taliban at the, the Afghanistan? What then are the results today? What was the situation by then in 1999? The war has taken over 20 years. Today, as we speak, the Taliban are all over this entire country, a country that produces narcotics the largest exporter of narcotics in the world. Did the Americans go there for economic gains? Did they save lives? How many lives are going to be lost as we cross over, as we watch the Taliban slaughter people, as we watch people being cut off, as we watch the generation wiped out of the surface, as we watch European countries and America, as we watch the United Nations telling people, give Afghanistan asylum. Why is the United Nations Security Council helpless? Why hasn't it taken a stand? Why then doesn't the permanent members of the United Nations Security Council form a rapid force? that will return to Afghanistan and make sure they retain 
the civility that they had retained. What do we do to a population that had adapted the behaviors of a civil society? What do we do to the people? What lessons do we learn from the invasion of Afghanistan? What have we learned from this? Why are they dumping the war again? This afternoon, from the headquarters of my political command center, I have learned that the United States of America is going to help the government of Democratic Republic of Congo under the request. I was telling you a few days ago, my viewers and my panel that would come in late, that the United States of America was looking, hovering over these countries. Planes were hovering over these nations, looking the, for where, how, when to offload their cargo from Afghanistan. They were looking for it in Mozambique. They have looked for it in Congo. They have looked for it in the Red Sea. They have looked for it in Tigray. As we speak today, they have found solace in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The United States of America is not the first time for entry into Congo. What results have we seen? My panel will look at that. But for me, let me trace back the Taliban patrolling the videos can be shown now the taliban's patrolling the entire country called afghanistan 1999 the most interesting thing today is president barack i don't know whether the students watching know what who is the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood? If you know anything to do with Al Qaeda, after the death of Osama bin Laden and the death of my very many other people, including Madame Benazio Bhutto, my great sister. We struggled together in London, Hill Hall University, studying in Calcutta House. May her soul rest in peace. General President Mudar Musharif had a plan, a master plan. Today, as you see the new leader of Al Qaeda taking over the Taliban, it's shameful. The Muslim Brotherhood of Morsi in Egypt has resurrected in Afghanistan. The name is no longer Afghanistan. It has changed the name to the Emirates. I think the project, Dr. Nyachama will tell us the full names. They have added the word Emirates. What does that tell you? The country is in the Emirates. One of the countries sponsored the Taliban. Sometime back here on that show, I told the people that the Taliban were meeting Americans. And then let the people in Uganda and the Kenya, the Ugandan government and the Kenyan government, not to be shocked that one day we shall be told that Al-Shabaab is meeting the Taliban, is meeting the Americans are meeting, Somali is meeting Al-Shabaab and therefore Ugandan troops will be left at the mercy of the same enemy that we went in Somalia to fight. The Kenyan troops 
will be left at the mercy of the enemies that they went into Somalia to fight. The collapse of the hegemony of Americans across in the Gulf leaves a lot to be desired. An empire, a hegemony built over time. How will America again regain its supremacy to control an Emirates, a Republic of Emirates? <laughs> another state lunatic state growing up in the gulf in central asia a neighboring state of iran if you add afghanistan the former afghanistan and then you add the breaking up states of russia in the north and the northwest then you add on Pakistan, how will America control the collapse of Afghanistan? The products of the collapse of Afghanistan bring more tears than joy, bring more questions than answers. How was the planning done? For every war, anybody who has gone to war, like myself and others, there must always be an exit strategy. Comrades, friends, those watching this tip, tip this evening, do we have an exit strategy in case the Americans leave us in the hands of Al Shabaab? We must begin talking about it. The events across, the events that have embarrassed every American who is in the States and outside the States and embarrass any human being who has civility, who yearns for peace, who wants peace in the world, are very many. Where are we prepared for this? How many people were prepared for this? The Trump administration announced that they will not, they will prepare a timetable for a departure of American troops from Afghanistan. Among the decisions that Trump made, among the decisions that have been rescinded by the new administration. This decision of Afghanistan was not rescinded. Why? Why? Is the withdrawal tactical? I will leave that question to be answered by my panel and those watching us across the globe how many of you have confidence that at one stage america will come back fight to recapture afghanistan in africa we have examples where america and nato left us crying The dismantling of the Libyan system, the killing of Muammar Gaddafi, the destruction of Libya, the divisions of Libya is a very clear example of a double standard of the hegemonist policy of the Americans. Are there people going to like Americans anymore? Yes, there are good things that Americans do. But on this one, I don't think there is any person who has sense in the world who can sit down and say, thank you very much, America, for departing hastily outside Afghanistan, out of Afghanistan. What was your mission? Why did you go there in the first place? You went there to change things. 
What happened? What went wrong? Where is the National Army? Where is the Paris Donor Conference? We sat down, the whole world flew into Paris. Dr. Najama and the rest. The world flew. Leaders jetted their jets. Planes landed into the Paris Donor Conference for Afghanistan. What did this man do? What has the man done? Is it the question of accountability again that has killed some African countries? That has killed where UN has gone? That has killed where America has gone? Where is accountability for the money? What did we do with the money? We were told we needed to train an, an Afghanistan army, a national army in Afghanistan. Did this army evaporate? Was it taken to heaven very early? I don't know. Dr. Nyachama is a Christian like me. We almost go to the same church. We don't know whether angels came down and took this army of Afghanistan where billions and billions of dollars were spent to train Afghanistan army. Has Afghanistan army changed into Taliban army? Because we don't see the Taliban arresting anyone. We haven't seen the Taliban taking over, picking people on the streets. Is there something that we don't know, which both the Americans and the Taliban know? When they discussed these matters in Doha, when I reported that discussions have been going on in Asmara, silent discussions have been taking place in Asmara. Today, the Americans found, have found themselves struck from the bottom, struck from the west, from the east. They did not anticipate the type of disaster they would cause for this universe. Look at negotiations. You tell us not to negotiate with terrorists. But you go ahead at night to negotiate with terrorists. What implications? What implications do you give to the rest of the terrorists who would like to pick up their guns and come to destroy Africa? Are we safe in Africa? Time and time again in Africa, we have cried. We have cried about several things. One of the things that we have cried about is the type of wars of Boko Haram Al Shabaab. Now in Mozambique, another Al Shabaab growing up. You can see we might have another Republic of Emirates. I don't know why there is a Republic of Emirates. Why there should be a Republic of Emirates? Who are the main sponsors? of this type of wars. One of you on the panel, you will be given time. When your time comes, you can speak about it briefly. Tell us who, what is the benefit? What effect will they pull out from Afghanistan? We are on the route. Mombasa and Kenya is on the route of no cocaine. Remember President Uhuru Kenyatta blew up a ship full of cocaine and other drugs that had been killing the people of Kenya and Africa at the cost. We want to thank you, President Uru Kenyatta, for the tenacity and the steadfastness that you conducted the affairs of finishing the drug trade on the continent, Eastern continent of Africa. Ships no longer anchor in the Mombasa port to supply cocaine. Ships no longer bring in a list trade of cocaine from the 
the posh areas of Afghanistan. Who was trading in this? Who has been trading in the cocaine? Have we reached a point we have had enough? Have we stocked enough of cannabis that we reach a point we say we leave these people on their own to die? Viewers, friends, I have stood up to cry for Africa. Friends, I have demonstrated that Africa can rise rebuff get a renaissance friends i've done my best my voice has been heard across the world i have not feared i have criticized the war to those who have helped me i thank you to those who continue to help me thank you but i will not Keep quiet when I see a danger and a proxy war being brought on the continent of Africa. The pullout from Afghanistan, the effects of that pullout, the collapse of civilization and the creation of an Islamic state in Afghanistan, I submit. It will create more and more difficulties for our trading in the Indian Ocean and the Gulf. I also submit that it is very naive after 20 years of some form of civilization. The Americans have allowed the nation of Afghanistan to return to the dark ages of Islamic State where the Taliban had powers to cut off your neck without any excuse. How long will this take? Will America return to Afghanistan? If so, when? Is it a tactical withdrawal? If so, how? Thank you very much. I would like us to operate with decorum on this show that we always observe that we are being watched worldwide. Therefore, when we are discussing, let's discuss issues that will build students across the world and the other people watching our shows it gives us that you know type of difference from other people we are people who have the material we have plenty of that material we have spoken out and the truth has come out there's nothing we have spoken on this tele uh, television station that has never come true. I want to take this opportunity to say I've exhausted my 32 minutes. I had, had 30 minutes, but I've taken 30 minutes to open up the subject. Viewers across the world, thank you very much. Those are bits of the reports 1999, Afghanistan invaded the United States, fights Taliban with the next years of Al Qaeda. 201, 9-11 occurs. The war was declared on Afghanistan. The construction of um, Afghanistan started. International community, the force gathered, a rapid force goes into Afghanistan. 
2004, a new president of Afghanistan comes into existence. Several people were happy thinking things were going to be okay. In 2004, Bin Laden surfaces. Obama again recommits Afghanistan and swears to finish Bin Laden. 2011, Bin Laden was killed by the American SEALs. We thought that would be the end of the war. 2021, 15th day of August, the year of our Lord, the Afghanistan president ran out of the capital city, Kabul. The Taliban returned with a bang into Kabul. My panel and the viewers across the world, those are the key points. Americans hastily withdraw. We withdrew from America and from US, it's Afghanistan, went out of it. The Taliban have created a new state. They have named a new president. They have said they will respect the rule of law, allowing women to have their clothes, allowing women to go to school. We don't know how far this will go. Some of the rural areas are reporting massacres. The Americans are thinking of returning. Is it tactical? Will they return? Will the world listen and return? to put sanity in Afghanistan. Thank you very much. I now open the debate for discussion. On the panel tonight, wherever you are, we have Dr. Nachama, Joseph Nachama. Dr. Nachama is a resident panelist of Pankila in Africa Television. Dr. Nachama is an educationist. He studied anthropology. He talks of divinity. He talks of Marco Max. He talks of Abraham Lincoln, he talks of African proverbs. One of the African proverbs that I want you to enjoy today is a tree, a flowering tree. What happens around the flowering tree? There are always insects. Have you ever seen a flowering tree without insects? Go and try flowers. How many insects? From bottom, everybody will be crying for those flowers. Dr. Nyachama, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Dr. Masanga, and my fellow panelist, Daniel Lesonga. It's a privilege for me to be let me, here. Let me introduce Daniel Sean Wesonga. Welcome to the show. Yes, sir. Thank you, Dr. Masanga, David, and all the panelists uh, who are on the show tonight. We had Saxon from Harare, Zimbabwe is returning. We have also special programs, editor assignments, investigative assignments. Samuel Tawish, who is in Narok, they will come. Take it away, Dr. Necham. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Masanga. Absolutely, the situation in Afghanistan is, uh, is fluid. And uh, one critical issue, I hope the world is listening, it is morally wrong. And uh, Dr. Masanga, I wonder why the, the international uh, human rights lawyers are quiet. Because Dr. Masanga, let us isolate these issues into two. There is the legal aspect and the moral aspect. Let me begin from the legal aspect. Uh, viewers, you know, the Americans went to Afghanistan in um, in Iran, in, in, uh, which was triggered by the September first, uh, the stem day eleven. And remember, it is 20 years now. You can imagine Dr. Masanga, 20 years, children who were born, how old are they? 20 years. 
There is the law of dependency. Dr. Masanga, if you separate, let me, let me use a scenario, and the Americans need to reflect on this. If you reflect, if you separate with your family because of an avoidable situation, you decide to live apart, the children born in the wedlock who are depending on you, the court will order you to bring them up, to offer them food. The America, as a state, for the 20 years the children who were born in new in terms of security, it is the Americans who were offering security to that country. So they created dependent who depended on them on security. In fact, Americans need to be forced, not requested, to offer security, especially the children who were born all the period they were there, because they behaved in a manner that they are the ones who offer security to those citizens who were born within the period they were there. They cannot, therefore, at this time, just move away and leave vulnerable young people who were born at the period they were there. They will be stopped. You know, in law, we have the law, we call it the law of Esther Paul. From thinking that they have absolute right simply to walk away. For me, I am appealing to international human rights lawyers to invoke the provision in laws that guarantees dependents a right. Because in law, if you can prove that the person you are depending on is no longer willing to support you, the court will force him or her to provide support to you. It is in fact unfair and it is illegal for the American just to pull out knowing in terms of security the country is vulnerable when it has already shown that it was the key pillar in terms of security. The citizens of Afghanistan who are from one year to 20 years have a right even to go to court and they cause the Americans to over the security because the time since they were born, they knew they were the one providing security. Number two, morally, of course, is wrong because they are only focusing on their interests. I hope those are, who are concerned are listening to this. And you know, Dr. Masanga, you, you brought an issue that uh, could it be that there was uh, an agreement between the Taliban uh, and, uh, and the Americans uh, with a tech, uh, you know, a strategic retreat so that they reemerge again? I think there is that suspicion. Why? Maybe because they have already made a pre agreement that you come in and then this is how you will cut off our interest. Number three, for the country that also have interest, I think now we need to So we got you off there. We got you off. Dr. Najama, get your internet in order. You had brought a point of the agreement. Was there an agreement between the Taliban and the United States? Daniel Wesonga. 
Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Dr. Masanga David. And of course, the conflict uh, in Afghanistan has to worry uh, <laughs> all of us globally uh, because you understand that uh, uh, with now the withdrawal of the American forces, we understand that uh, in the Middle East, we, we, are, we are going to have a problem. As you've said, a state is being uh, formed up and this state is not being formed by a legitimate uh, leadership, rather by a leadership which has been known for brutally uh, killing people, for brutally even assaulting women and denying them of their rights. And one question we should ask, that how does America benefit by its uh, premature withdrawal of, of Af Afghanistan? Is it creating a crisis so that later on, uh, the crisis might be big enough so that later on it might come back in another way and take over Afghanistan uh, like it has been doing in the last 20 years? And also we have to ask ourselves, in the last 20 years that America has been in Afghanistan, what have they been doing? They were there in the pretext of uh, uh, working with Afghanistan uh, the military and training them in a way of uh, combating with uh, the Taliban. Why did the, uh, why, why did the, 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 the Afghanistan uh, military not uh, get these skills that are uh, in that uh, whenever, well, just once the Americans withdrew from, uh, uh, from Afghanistan, Taliban took over from them? What happens to the billions of shillings that uh, America has been pouring into Afghanistan? So to me, Dr. Matsanga, I think, uh, like uh, Dr. Joseph Nyanchama has said, there is a problem, and the problem could be that uh, America could be uh, clandestinely working with the uh, Taliban in order to advance their own secret interests in that uh, they agree to have a Taliban government in, in place, and therefore they can back, come back later through the back door and renegotiate with the Taliban government. Or either there is something sinister. A very, very precarious situation. Most people are actually living in terror. And as you can see, the pictures that are coming from there, people do not want to stay in that particular country. They are fleeing from their own country, which means that... Uh, we need to look at them as a world and be able to offer a solution to, in terms of leadership to those people. The interest of America cannot surpass the interest of those millions of people who live in Kabul. The interest of Taliban and uh, whoever is working with America to ensure that uh, we have such a bad situation in Afghanistan cannot surpass those interests of the people who have been living uh, peacefully in Afghanistan. If America is doing something tactical, in, in that they want to show uh, the Afghanistanis uh, how life will be without their soldiers being present uh, in, uh, in, in Kabul. They should know that it is not uh, the people of Afghanistan, uh, it, it is not rather uh, the, 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 the leadership there that will suffer these particular repercussions, but the poor people, the poor people who do not have the say in the government of the day. So therefore, I think it is something that uh, America and other world leaders and the UN should reconsider and ensure that Afghanistan gets a very, very stable government, a legitimate government that will ensure that uh, Taliban does not get hold again of the country for another maybe two decades, which will be uh, oversee perhaps a very, very breakdown, a big breakdown in leadership in Afghanistan. I submit Dr. Masanga. Thank you very much. Let's take, I don't know whether there is another person here online before I come back to Dr. Nyachama because you were making your final submission. Saxon Zima from Zimbabwe, Arari. Good evening, viewers. Good evening, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Matsanga. Thank you uh, very much. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, my my own uh, interpretation of the Afghan situation is that. Uh, the, that, that's what people that are the Americans, whenever they intervene in nation, they don't have our interest, but they do have their own interest. And what uh, the implications of the they always draw from Afghanistan is they have actually emboldened the terrorists that they can get away with it. Uh, they are indefeatable as long as they have with the resolution. Um, they have got to remain with their resolve. And it's, it's actually an embarrassment to the Americans all the nations that were fighting the terror, terrorism. They have lost four trillion in this war and 800 million uh, uh, empires, the most expensive empires that they've set up worldwide. 
another angle is uh, the other nations who are also saying Americans is been uh, trying to poke their nose in other nations' affairs. They've noticed that today the Russian and the Chinese embassy say they would uh, they're willing to work with the Taliban, and uh, that's a cause for concern. That okay, where is the world going? That seems uh, uh, this east-west war is, seems, seems to be uh, degenerating, and uh, our Africans should be concerned about the, how to handle the issue of terrorism, how uh, we need to have a homegrown solution. Both from the onset, the, the Afghan, uh, Afghanistan people didn't want uh, uh, even the Kazai government that was imposed upon them, meaning we need, uh, the world needs to accept that people need to come up with their own solution. Uh, going to war in Afghanistan was unjustifiable because it didn't achieve the objective. To me, it's the second uh, Saigon, and it's a lesson to uh, the imperialists that uh, try let people solve their own problem, problems and not interfere. And for Africa, we don't need to rely on Americans, on the way Europeans. They will form alliance with these terrorists, and uh, I see the resurgence of Al-Qaeda. I think they've released thousands of Al-Qaeda who were held in a prison uh, in America. And the leader of the new Taliban, is why he served eight years in Guantanamo Bay. What he's going to do? I foresee the resurgence of Al Qaeda uh, teaming up with ISIS and Shabab, and I think, oh, it broke loose for the world. I submit. Thank you very much, Saxon from Zimbabwe. Saxon says he sees a resurgence, a unity, reunion of those. You know, the way the thing is going right now. You can't know who is a terrorist, who is coming to the United States. Everybody is boarding a plane to go. No other departure, departure from Afghanistan. Some places, the way they left Mogadishu is exactly the way they have left Afghanistan. They left Mogadishu half hazard. Left us a war in this region. Dr. Najama, looking at the scenario of Afghanistan and the, of today and the scenario of Mogadishu in 1991, what do you see as a comparison? Uh, uh, Dr. Masango, firstly, I, I wanted to complete, sorry, my internet went low. What I was just telling the East African Legion countries where my country of course, my country included Kenya. They need not be very vigilant because now uh, the situation is ambiguous in, in, in uh, Afghanistan and in ambiguity lies the greatest opportunity. Now, the sadists, you know, the, the drug dealers now, this is the harvest time. So they need to be very careful. Dr. Masanga, there is one uh, angle that uh, I don't know the United, uh, the, uh, the UN Security Council. Let me maybe bring another anchor. Who controls the number of ammunition when as a country like uh, America goes there? Could it be, Dr. Masanga, look at the, the easy way the Taliban's captured the various cities in Afghanistan. Could it be that some of the guns, the Americans handed them over to, to the Taliban? How can you rule out that? Where, where, where is the record? You know, you know who audited? Okay, you went to Afghanistan with what ammunition? You are leaving. You must, uh, you must table say I came in with this one. Now I'm going. This is what came in. I am seeing a possibility that these guys could have left. Uh, uh, very deadly ammunition with, with, with the terrorists. That is why they are easily capturing various cities. Because people were worried all over the world. How easy were they capturing? Could it be that uh, the government forces of, of uh, Afghanistan had wind that these people have the deadly ammunition of America and that they could not resist this? So, I just possibility. It worries. Hello, Dr. Terry? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Dr. Najama, you, we've lost you again. 
Yeah, okay, you have come back. You were making your point. I've yes. come back. I was trying to say, Dr. Masanga, is that, uh, of course, that is the first aspect. Uh, the United Nations Security Council needs to come up with the new laws and the regulations. If you have to go and give protection to another country, you must declare the ammunition you take there. And if you are to leave, it must be accounted for. How do we know, by the way, they hand it over to the terrorists? That's why they are able to, cap to, to capture cities very easily. And the Americans, if you ask me, Dr. Masanga, what is the combustion factor here when they came to Somalia? Absolutely, these are cowards. In fact, we need to remove the tag that is the most, uh, uh, it's the most powerful nation in the world. It is not. They do things a hard way and they retreat. I want to tell the American, look them in the eye. A hard effort does not yield to a hard result. It yields to zero. So there are 20 years of effort in that country is zero. It is only full effort that yields full result. When they came to Somalia, you see the disaster they left behind. They are leaving a trail of cowardice wherever their footprints are. And I think we are appealing to states in the world. These are, this is a very dangerous state which cannot be allowed. I have a power in terms of merit, military equipment. It is, it is causing more havoc. And it is high time nations started to discuss the risk of America pretending to go and protect. You had the statement being issued that their mission is over, that they went there to, to ensure that the, the, the instant of, uh, of, 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 of um, September 11 does not reoccur, that since they assessed and saw that there is no risk then they would the true. That is a lie. We are not children. Let them tell us the truth. What behind okay. the scenes agreement they make with the Taliban? Okay, let's bring it home. Don't go away. Hold it there. Let's bring it home. And all, all of you panelists, you can chip in. Let's bring it home. We have Al Shabaab fighting for almost the same number of years. <laughs> also, we have had a, a war in the conflict in the Horn of East Africa, in Somalia. Americans caused us this war and they ran away and they left us in 1991. In fact, the war in Somalia is one of the longest war than the one in Taliban. They didn't want this war to end. They have never wanted this war to end. I think I'm beginning to buy a bit of what uh, Dr. Nyachama has said, <laughs> that there is something that we don't know. Now let's bring it home. Given the experience that from 1991 to date, governments in Somalia have changed. And changed, and today we have a government, but we still have the same enemy either changing in the color or format. If you look at the uniforms that Al-Shabaab wears and the uniform that the Saudi Arabian government wears, troops, it's the same. Are we safe with Songa? We are Daniel. not safe. Yes, Dr. Masanga, we are not safe. Because remember, uh, is even Taliban takes leadership in Afghanistan. We are going to have small fragments of rebels. We are going to have fighters. You know, these are country over the 20 years that the U.S. Army has been there fighting the Taliban. We have had a, pro a proliferation of uh, weapons coming into the country. And even as they move out, as Dr. Nyanchama said, where is the accountability of the weapons that they have been uh, importing uh, in, into that country? Those are the weapons that are soon going to find themselves into the hands of very, very small groups in, in Afghanistan 
and we are going to have the kind of situations that we have in uh, that we had in 1991 in Somalia, a situation that has taken decades to solve. And even not, right now, as we speak, Somalia cannot stand on its own feet. And when you look, even in terms of religious uh, uh, subscriptions and in and and the way they govern themselves, Somalia has very very close similarities with Afghanistan. They are all Islamic countries. They are all much inclined towards uh, Islam in their leadership and incorporating it into all the structures of government. And now being the fact that uh, Taliban is taking over, we are more likely to see the, a similar scenario being replicated in, uh, in, in Afghanistan. And that has been something that has happening in most uh, Arabic countries and uh, like Yemen, Libya and all that. So with that sudden withdrawal, the shocks that uh, America has caused on that particular country, I'm going to make the country to fall into chaos. And also the fact that we have weapons which have been, uh, we, we, which are remnants of their presence, uh, the 20 year long presence in Afghanistan. We are more likely to see a uh, smaller splinter groups coming up fighting the Taliban government and the entire country sooner than we know it will be into chaos. I submit Dr. Masanga. You brought in the question of the link that if the entire region of Indian Ocean, the Red Sea, the Gulf, if it has turmoil, Dr. Nyakama, is there, do you see some signs of a proxy war planted somewhere around there where the Americans would use a pretext of their interests come back to that region? If uh, compare, considering the maritime situation, under two, get that question. Then the second question I want to ask you, America sits on the United Nations Security Council. America knows that the United Nations Security Council is the supreme body that employs ICJ the general manager of International Court of Justice and the International Criminal Court. But in this case, we are dealing with a conflict on the maritime situation, for example, of Somalia and Kenya. The general manager of that court is the Secretary General of the United Nations. Is the Secretary General of the United Nations aware that the ruling in the courts between Somalia and Kenya is most likely to trigger a big conflict in the Indian Ocean. And if so, why are they not taking and talking about it? Why can't they defer, make a deferral about the ruling? Is this ruling, if it is ruled that this territory belongs are we going to rule that the territory belongs to God? Have you ever heard of such a ruling? Is there Nyachama, am I complicating things or you get it? <laughs> Are we going to rule that the maritime oil blocks belong to God? Because that's the only that's the only ruling that can stop Kenya and um, Somalia going to war. Am I wrong? Uh, you are right, Dr. Masanga. Thank you. Let's talk about it. Now, I, I think um, engage scholars and, and the symbol, lawyers need to know this. You know, even the UN, the Security Council, the best way of managing security in nations across the world is to focus and put more resources on deterrent. That is why, Dr. Masanga, we have re-emphasized consequentialism is the best way of giving justice. If, even if it means, in fact, using all possible means, do we draw this case from I from in the from the court 
to prevent a security situation in the Indian Ocean, it is the best option to go. Until you wait, the war to break out, then you start sending troops. I mean, how naive can, uh, can some leaders be? It is okay. the consequences, okay. Dr. Masanga. You, 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 brought, you, brought, you brought a very good debate there. Kenya is on the United Nations Security Council. Yes. As a non-rotational member. Yeah. How far has Kenya gone? And I want the same question to be answered by Doug, uh, Daniel and any other person. Because I have I mix it with what the, 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 the viewers are asking here. Mr. Bismarck Bura says. What has Pakistan and the Arab world say about the entry of Taliban in Kabul? Have you ever heard the word? Is Pakistan condemning the entry of Taliban in Kabul? No. No. Equally, is the UN Security Council looking at next month's ruling in the UN court a trigger for a war? And they are not speaking. So who is worse here? Both of you will answer that question. Yes, I thank you, Dr. Masanga. Uh, no, that is to me, Dr. Masanga. Yes, yes, finish up your question. Because you are finishing up. I wanted to give you that. Then we'll some. Are you there? Okay, we're Songa. Doctor will come back. Yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Masanga, David. And uh, of course, uh, Pakistan has a bigger role to play in whatever is happening uh, in Kabul today. And just the same way you are doing a comparative analysis uh, with the UN Security Council, just sitting pretty there as the war broils up in the Indian Ocean between Kenya and Somalia. I think uh, uh, pa uh, Pakistan and the Arab world, they owe the people of Af Afghanistan uh, some kind of responsibility for whatever is happening there today. If they were to step up and stand up as a regional hegemony of uh, which they are, then this uh, kind of scenario will not have been uh, uh, perhaps okay, uh, been occasioned. Because I believe even for the Amer for Americans to pull out of the region, perhaps they might have had some kind of a uh, difficult, uh, uh, cumbersome working relationship with the regional leadership. Uh, that is the uh, countries that are actually stable in the region, Pakistan being amongst them. But because they sit pretty and watch whatever is happening take place, today the country, uh, Afghanistan, is in the hands of Taliban. Whatever may be uh, benefits that they stand to, to, to reap out of that, it is all well known uh, between themselves and other regional allies that work with them. The same thing that is happening with the UN Security Council. Why is it not intervening, knowing very well that these oil blocks that are the center of the controversy in the Indian Ocean belong to Kenya? The reason why they do not want to get themselves involved is because we have countries who sit in the UN Security Council who also have vested interest in the same oil blocks uh, that are uh, the bone of, of contention between Kenya and Somalia. And therefore, we must end this kind of pretense between countries that are, are supposed to be actually be talking on the table to evade such kind of scenarios. So if today, uh, if today Pakistan has not talked uh, days after uh, Taliban took leadership in Afghanistan, occasioning the, the legitimate government to escape from the country, then what else are we waiting for? The same thing that is happening with the ICJ case, Kenya versus Somalia ICJ uh, court case that uh, is being, uh, that uh, the verdict will be uh, given out very soon. If the UN Security Council is not talking about that, then as, as, as well, they might be as well occasioning a war in the Indian Ocean. And uh, we must uh, smell the coffee early enough and be able to take, the, take it to their table and tell them they must do something about it. Otherwise, if you are not able to get that conflict resolved between Kenya and Somalia, then maybe we might be having another war in the Indian Ocean, and that having that uh, in the in the in the Middle East countries are actually falling apart 
we are going to have a very, very huge problem. And if those world superpowers, those who sit in the UN permanent seat in the, in, in the Security Council think that uh, this particular conflict, if we have such kind of a scenario uh, in the Horn of Africa and the, in the Middle East, that it might not affect them, then they might, uh, they, 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 should, uh, they should think twice about whatever decisions they are making and whatever repercussion their silence will have on the stability of the region and the on stability of uh, the, the global uh, security in terms of uh, uh, combating global terror. I submit, Dr. Matsanga. Thank you very much. Uh, Stephen, in the studios in Nairobi, I've sent you the clip of President Joe Biden has just addressed the world. Can you let's listen, then we come to Dr. Nyachama. Stephen, let's listen to that clip. You've seen it. Okay, Dr. Nyachama has the clip, is ready, gets ready. The same question, you were developing a point there that I brought in something that can help that point. How we look at what is the Islamic world talking about? Pakistan, the main supplier of the Taliban, the main route. Al-Qaeda was found in Pakistan after they had killed my friend Benazo Bhutto. They killed her. General Perez Musharraf. I will never forget me. I wish I don't meet him at all anywhere because I don't want to look at his face. So we have this problem. Pakistan, what does it say? What do you think? Why is it quiet? One of the viewers here has asked, what did it say? Uh, you know, they, uh, they, are, uh, they are silently celebrating. You know, you, you know, they are the suppliers of some of this ideology of the uh, Talibanism. So, Dr. Masanga, what did you expect? That's why they are quiet. They are seeing brotherhood is, is, is increasing in territory. You know? The, 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 the friends in arms are, are increasing. That is a pointer that some of these Taliban's are getting support from those countries, which are silent. That's absolutely, we don't need to overemphasize the point here. And Dr. Masanga, you know, I was making a point and, uh, when my internet went low is that um, the, United, uh, the UN Security Council, they need to adopt uh, the normal operation of a doctor, not a pathologist. You know, they suffer from the pathologism syndrome of what use for a pathologist to say, uh, so and so died of this disease. When you are yes. a chance to, I think that should be the approach, especially the video in the is Indian Ocean. The video now is ready. You are right. Pathologist. Yeah, hold the fire there. Let's look at the video. Let me ask those who want us to stay. How many more, how many thousands more Americans, daughters and sons are you willing to risk? How long would you have them stay? Already we have members of our military whose parents fought in Afghanistan 20 years ago. Would you send their children? And their grandchildren as well? Would you send your own son or daughter? After 20 years, a trillion dollars spent training and equipping hundreds of thousands of Afghan national security and defense forces. 2,448 Americans killed, 20,722 more wounded, and untold thousands coming home with unseen trauma to their mental health. I will not send another generation of Americans to war in Afghanistan with no reasonable expectation of achieving a different outcome. Thank you very much. Welcome back. You have heard the justification why they have pulled out that people have spent 20 years, which is the point. Dr. Nachama made at first when you began. 
but they have the responsibility as parents of those children. Now they talk of responsibility of their own children in America, but not the children that were born, less the Taliban. So what do we do with the children that were born, less the Taliban, who have grown under America for 21 years? What will you do to them? What, where will you take them? Why is America more protective to its own citizens? And why did they enter there first of all? Why did they then invade Afghanistan, Mr. Najama? Dr. Najama, we seem to be missing Dr. Najama's point. Dr. Najama, yes? Sorry, I temporarily went off. So you were asking a question, doctor? Yes, I was asking. You said rightly at the beginning of your presentation that what about the children of Afghanistan? They need to be looked at and fed because they only grew up under Americans. Exactly, Dr. Masanga. But, but America now, President Joe Biden, Biden has just said he cannot have a generation growing up in Afghanistan with their children there they don't see their children so have you seen the hegemony that they think about their own hegemony but they don't think about the children the orphans the, the children they have left there some of them are producing children with Afghanistan women what do you do to these children who are going to be slaughtered to these men, women, who are going to be slaughtered because they worked with Americans. Go ahead. Hey, Dr. Masai, I think the Americans here, they are wrong here. They need to be brought to... I think you have internet issues, but we are almost coming to the end of our show. Well, Songa, you have heard the clip of Dr. Of, of President Joe Biden. Is it a weak administration in America? It says yes, they, have, they have been successful. They have won. They got everything they want. They have stabilized Afghanistan. Is it not this a naked day, 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 day time lie? Wesonga. Yes, sir. Thank you, Dr. Matsonga David. And of course, America has to take responsibility for whatever uh, reason it has been in Afghanistan for the past 20 years. Because uh, this is how I look at it. If today you go to a, a particular province or region in Kenya, you set up an industry which actually benefits your people back at home and you realize that uh, you are staying in that particular area actually shapes the lifestyle, it shapes the social, economic, and political uh, atmosphere of that particular place, then you have to exercise what we call social responsibility. Therefore, as you have just said, Dr. Matsanga, we have children for the past 20 years, people whose their lives have been affected due to the American presence in Afghanistan. What happened to these people? We have people whose lives have been changed due to the occupation uh, that America has had on Afghanistan for the last 20 years. America has to take our responsibility for this. It is not just enough for Biden to say that the American youth, young people are safe in their own land and forget about the impact this particular uh, just sudden withdrawal from Afghanistan will have on the massive number of people who are living in Afghanistan. And therefore, I, sub I, I submit and support your sentiment that uh, we must have some sense of responsibility for, from the Biden administration, whatever evil that will come out of this particular uh, sudden withdrawal of troops from Afghanistan, be it from uh, the Taliban's evils, be it from the Taliban's misrule, all of it will all find a trace into the doorstep of the administration of President uh, Joe Biden. And therefore, they take the full responsibility. They, have their share, they, have their, they must have their share of the responsibility of things that are happening in Afghanistan today. I submit, Dr. Masanda. 
Thank you very much. Viewers, wherever you are across the globe, you have been watching Matanga Africa Perspective. If you missed the start of this show, which was very lively, you will get it on our platform of Punchline Africa and all our outlets, Radio Africa, the Eye on Africa. You will get it across Punchline, the Red, Punchline Radio Africa and on Punchline TV itself. I want to thank you very much. I know the people of the world expect America to do more. But America alone cannot, now it has shown, is not able to deliver all the peace that we want. We are left in the hands of God and ourselves. Can we therefore call upon the Taliban in the Afghanistan, in Kabul, in Jalababad, in Musharraf, all these cities, in Kandahar, all these cities to look after the civilian community, to care for their own people. Because they cannot rule a desert. Neither can they rule themselves without these people to pay taxes and to be a nation, to come back to a nation. That's all we pray. If they have chosen the route that they have chosen, there's nothing we can do now. It is upon God. And I pray that they don't go back to terrorism to disrupt this continent, the continents and the universe. Thank you very much. Thank you. This was Matsanga Africa Perspective, brought to you by Dr. Matsanga himself, all the way from the Political Command Center in London. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you very much, all of you, the panel. The Thank you. Watching. Thank you, Dr. Matsanga. Thank you very much. I have one thing to say with Songa that we have stood and said it we continue to stand to say it the word that we want to do are two words thank you yes